here to remember this part. So, due Sunday, you have two assignments, remember? All right. So, if you were absent on Monday, if you were not here Monday, you need to do your Monday lecture assignment. Okay? Number one. Everybody needs to do the paragraph description of the video you would like to use for your term project. And this is going to be a chance for me to look at it and approve it. Now, I want you to notice that it says here that your paragraph needs to have two sources utilized and also listed at the bottom according to either APA or MLA, whichever you are going to be using, all right? So you think about it this way. Your paragraph on a piece of paper looks like that, you know, and did for your paragraph. It needs to be double spaced. It should be 12 point font. My recommendation is to always use Times New Roman. Right, that's the most traditional and the most professional. And that satisfies APA, MLA, Chicago, etc. Underneath your paragraph, you need to have source number one, um, and you're going to be listing them usually in alphabetical order. All right. So you're going to have a citation, proper citation. If you need help, go to Citation Machine. That can help you, all right? And in this, you're going to do one that is specifically the source for the video. Make sure that you are including the URL. If you're following proper source citation, then the URL is going to be a part of that, all right? And the second one needs to be your textbook. So if you are referring to your textbook and you have your IPC series that have been approved, within this context of this paragraph, you should be connecting, all right? So connect the video to your IPC theory or theories. It might be one theory, it might be two theories, wherever you want, all right? But you got to give us some reason why this particular video is going to inform your classmates to understand about the culture of the country that you're going to be studying, all right? Or the religious group or whatever it is you're, you're looking at, all right? So you need to connect, all right, the video to the IPC terms. All right, now you think about it. A paragraph is basically a minimum of five sentences. You have your topic sentence at the beginning, you have your concluding sentence at the end, and then you have three sentences in the middle that are your evidence, all right? Your supporting material. This is what you have in those three sentences, all right? This is your evidence as to why this video is going to meet the requirement of your term project, all right? If your video is longer than seven minutes, and oftentimes they are, sometimes they're very short, sometimes it may be one to two minutes, okay, or five minutes. But if it's longer than seven minutes, all right, what you are going to need to do is to make a note at the end of your paragraph before you get into your sources. You need to give a note. Watch 333 to 5. 58. So tell me what part of that video you want me to focus on, all right, so that it is within um, the seven minutes, okay, because I don't want to be watching 3,000 minutes of video, right, to try and figure out what is the point of what you're trying to get. 
it within seven minutes? Timeline for that frame? If it's over seven minutes, then yeah, we need to do this. If it's over seven minutes. Okay, we should have it under. Yeah. Okay. The best thing is to have it like five minutes or less. Okay. Seven is really putting it at the high end. Okay. And, and, and at this point, all of you should be able to tell me when it comes time to deliver your um, term project, how you want to do it. Okay. So there are two methods for the acceptable methods for doing your term project. You may do a term paper or you may do an oral presentation. If you do an oral presentation, we will set the time and it will be before um, the end of the semester. So we'll just plot you into one of the days so that you get it out of the way and you don't have to mess with it. The term paper is according to the schedule when you have to decide it, right? So let me just ask you right now, um, Matthew, what do you think you want to do? And do this. I, yes, I did. I'm pretty sure we already did this uh, last class. Yeah. I don't have it down. I don't have you down. What do you want? Well, I was going to do the paper. Did we do the paper? Yeah. Okay, for some reason I didn't write everybody down. Okay. Um, and then in this group, oh, yes, you did. Okay. Oh, except for Mallory. I don't know. Do you want to do a term paper? Or did you want to do an oral presentation? Yes. Well, in terms of the IPC theory. So basically, instead of writing a term paper, you make a PowerPoint and you use that to do it. Paper should be three to five pages long. What is public? Yeah, you're a public speaker. So you're going to do oral. All right. And yeah, Matthew, I do see now. All right. So you guys are good to go. Okay. Julia, did you decide yet on what you wanted to do? I was going to do the paper. Oh, yes, you are. I got you. Perfect. Thank you, Julia. Okay. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about Monday. Now, so Monday, we started to talk as an overview of what, well, we finished uh, emotion communication, and then we went into listening communication, and we really went into, um, you know, what are the theoretical reasons, or what, what happens? Why is listening even important? Um, I'm going to give everybody a card, and I recommend that you put this someplace. Um, these, when you get your cards, these are good reminders of how to behave. And I'm going to talk about each one of them very quickly. You walk into my office or up to my office. Um, you're going to see one of these on my um, before you walk in, and if you go down to Ms. Grind's office, you're going to see another one of them before you walk into hers. Okay, so the first thing is think. You've all done your conflict resolution, so I'm going to be talking about that next week. Um, your go-to style. One of the things that we start to pause as an emotional intelligent person is to really think before we speak and these are the reminders so before you text you send an instagram snapchat picture um, an email and verbally you speak to somebody this is an acronym to help people remember take a moment to stop and if you can remember these, this little acronym to think about what these elements are, then you will be a better conversationalist. You will be a more kind person. You will be less, hopefully, argumentative and less judgmental. All right. And so 
before you respond to what somebody may say, you, t you ask yourself, is, you know, is what I'm going to say, is it true? Is it going to be helpful to the person or to the situation or to the group? Is it inspiring? Is it going to help people to want to be better? Um, is it necessary? Man, this is a big one. Is it necessary? Because sometimes people will respond, and you've heard the reaction to that, and you'll say, is that necessary? You know, you've heard those people who have said things, it's like, why? Why did you say that right now? Especially you can think about yourself if you've got siblings, and you've said something to a sibling, and your you know, mom may have said, like, well, was that necessary? Did you have to say that right now? Kind of thing. My favorite, however, is the K. Kindness. You can give positive praise, but you can also give constructive criticism with kindness. And when you really care about somebody, you're going to take the time to give that feedback. All right. So, as Daria shared with us early in the semester, you know, there was a coach after a basketball game, it's not his own coach, who was kind when he talked to you, right? And he cared enough about this perfectly strange, er, not strange, but a new player he had never known before except for seeing him play in the game. He cared enough about him as an individual to give him constructive feedback. And he did it with kindness. And it stuck with him. It stuck with him that he even shared it. And it has come back to help him remember. All right. So those are good people in our lives. Those are amazing people. Sometimes they come into our lives in a flash. Other times they come in for a long period of time and stay within our, um, uh, our circle uh, for how long we need them. This one is how we listen better. This one you may want to put, I don't know, put this up on your refrigerator, um, right for children, teenagers. Uh, this is the Asian character, this is Chinese, character for the word listen. Now what's interesting is that if you know about Asian calligraphy, um, they use symbols and the collection of symbols to represent um, an idea or a feeling, you know, a thought, etc. That's how they write instead of using letters like we do. And in this one, look at the value of this. It says, obviously, you're going to use your ears to listen, right? You're going to hear it um, or some way hear it if you are um, hearing impaired. You're going to listen with your mind, but also look over there at the bottom. You're also going to listen with your heart. Try to avoid only doing one. Sometimes you have to separate them to better understand and get control. But it is, but you know, you don't want to just do only thinking with your head or only thinking with your heart, because that will lead to poor decision making. All right. Um, obviously, you're going to listen to the nonverbal body language as well. So you're going to be listening with your eyes as you observe how a person behaves. But my favorite on this one is you notice the dark blue line. And that dark blue line is the symbol that says, but you're going to be listening with undivided attention. In other words, you're going to be listening with full attention, with all these senses, all of these elements, so that you hear correctly, you hear accurately, you hear with feeling, and you hear with thought. Right? We can learn a lot here. So this is a good way of um, looking at how to listen. But life happens. So I want you all to pull up your textbooks and um, on your phones, and I want you to go to page 100 on your cell phone. And I'm going to give you an exercise from your um, book that you're going to do in um, 
discussions. Page 100 in your textbook. Page 100, scroll down to the bottom where it says exercises. Julia, are you able to do that as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, as soon as you get to page 100, Justin, I'm going to ask you to come up here and sit here. I'm going to ask you two to be partners. And I'm going to ask you to go back there and be a partner with Ruben. All right. So now we need to just turn around or you can move back. All right. So, group, um, you guys are going to be group number one. And so at the bottom of page number um, 100, it says, and under the exercises, we are capable of thinking faster than the speed at which the average person speaks, which allows us some room to put mental faculties for things other than listening. Multitasking, double doing. What typically makes your mind wander? What two things do you typically do at the same time? Talk to each other and came up, come up with about five different kinds of examples of where this happens. When this happens and where it happens. All right. Then you're also going to jump down and all groups are going to do number four. Of the bad listening practices listed above, all right, which do you use the most and why do you think you use this one more than the other? What can you help to prevent or lessen that barrier? So, um, there it is, turn around. You need to talk with your partner here, but don't get too close. Don't stay social. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you're still going to talk. So you're going to do number one and number four. No, 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 no. You're not doing one. Oh, you guys are doing number three and four. Yeah. Oh, you're doing three and four. So you're going to describe a time recently when your ability to listen was impaired by the poor delivery and or content of what the other person said. Save this one for our two adults. Exactly. And I'm sure you guys will. Oh, yeah. And then I also want you to look for number four. Okay. And then you guys are going to do number three. I'm oh, sorry, number two. Yeah, so I want you to think of some bad speakers or instructors or messages or anything that when that person speaks, your mind just turns off. Why is that? What is it about that person and what they're saying or how they're speaking or they're just being, right? That is, just like, I just don't want to listen. It can be personal, it can be professional, it can be political, it can be, um, I don't know, it can be a teacher who will remain nameless, all right, um, those kinds of things. So just think about, you know, and describe what are their characteristics difficult for you to pay attention to. Okay? And then also, Okay, so Julia, I gave everybody um, one of the exercises. So for you, go ahead and just take a look at each one of these on your own. All right. Um, I'm going to actually turn off the video right now. Um, and I am going to show, I'm going to 
turn off the recording. You guys stop listening to me talk to Julia. Okay, I'll be there in a moment. Um, so Julia, I'm going to turn off the recording and um, I'm going to show the class of video in a few minutes and you can watch that video also and it will be listed in the assignment for um, today's lecture. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're going to post the assignment like um, in the module? Yes. yes. Okay. Gotcha. So that way you don't have to just stay on and listen to blank space. Okay. All right. You're good. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.